Hello everyone, I am Tanvi Kaur and I welcome you to this series called Finance Current Affairs. In this very series, we pick up some important financial topics and we try and discuss them with the help of different questions. So before moving on to question number one, if you are there for the very first time, do subscribe to our channel and press this bell icon so that you can be notified whenever a new video comes up. You can also join our telegram group, the link is in the description below. The free PDFs of these sessions will be provided in this very group. So if you want the access, you can join that group. Now moving on to question number one, which says, what does it refer to? So we have to read these two statements and identify the concept being talked about. The statement says, it is a process by which a company clumps its fin different financial assets like debts to form a consolidated financial instrument which is issued to the investors. And the second one says it enhances the liquidity in the market and serves as a useful tool especially for financial companies as it helps them raise more funds. So the topic which they are talking about, the concept which is being talked about, what is happening over here, different existing financial assets, usually the debts are combined to form a new instrument and that new instrument is then issued to the investors. This way the liquidity is increased in the market. Uh, this way the liquidity is increased and these existing instruments are used to create a new instrument and raise uh, and basically provide a new option to raise funds for the existing players in the market. So what do we call this entire process? The answer to this question is option B, securitization. So let us discuss properly what this securitization is all about. It is the process by which companies clubbing its different financial assets like debts to create a new consolidated financial instrument. It enhances the liquidity in the market and serves as a useful tool where your existing loans can be used and you can create new securities out of it. Then you can issue those to the investors and using that very existing asset, you basically raise money which now you can use to lend again. So this entire process is the securitization process. Let's understand this with an example. Suppose there is a bank, okay, and bank lends various kinds of loans. It might provide some automobile loans, it might provide some home loans, it might provide some educational loans and all those kinds of things. So when these loans are given to the borrowers, then usually something is taken as a collateral. Some asset is there which you mortgage and you get the loans in return. So this creates a mortgage pool for the banks. If you have suppose a loan, home loan, diya hai, if you have suppose given some home loan, then that house acts as a collateral against the loan which has been given. But the, this mortgage pool is basically an illiquid pool of assets. We have the assets but we cannot immediately convert them to cash. For example, if you need cash as a bank and if you will go and sell that house, you will not immediately get the money you need, the cash you need. But if it would have been an, a liquid asset, then you can easily convert it into cash and fulfill your financial needs. So in order to convert the uh, illiquid assets into the liquid assets, one option available is securitization. So what bank does is that this mortgage pool is used, all these assets are used to create new securities. The banks often sell these assets to a separate entity which they create called the special purpose vehicles. They will deal in converting these assets into new securities. So uh, with the help of these assets, with the help of the backing of these assets, new securities are created and those securities are then rated by the credit rating agencies and are sold in the market to the investors. When investors subscribe to those securities, they provide the money and that money goes to the bank. So that money can be used to further lend loans to other people. So this is how illiquid assets of the bank get converted into liquid ones and they get an option to raise more funding which they can further use to provide loans. So this entire process where your existing financial assets are consolidated and new securities are created out of it is known as securitization. When we are creating new securities, we are creating new securities. We call securitization. The same thing has been explained here with the diagram. So here is the originator. Who is the originator? Usually the bank or financial companies will give loans to different borrowers. Whenever they will give some loans, 
दे विल यूजली टेक एन एसेट एज अ कोलेट्रल आपको कुछ आ, कुछ मॉडगेज करना पड़ेगा उसके बदले आपको लोन मिलता है सो so, ऐसे कई बोरवर्स हैं जो बैंक से लोन लेते हैं ओके सो बैंक को वो uh, कुछ प्रॉपर्टी कुछ असेट्स अपने एज अ कोलेट्रल देते हैं पर दोज असेट्स ऑफ बैंक आर इलिक्विड असेट्स वो इलिक्विड असेट्स है तो बैंक क्या करता है एक अलग से एंटिटी क्रिएट करता है स्पेशल पर्पज व्हीकल इज अ सेपरेट कंपनी ट्रस्ट विच इज क्रिएटेड एक अलग एंटिटी क्रिएट कर देते हैं जिसका अपना लीगल स्टेटस होगा ताकि फाइनेंशियल रिस्क से वो अलग रहे बेसिकली तो आ, उनकी लीगल एंटिटी जो है वो एक वो एक सेपरेट लीगल एंटिटी होगी अपने उनके असेट्स लाइबिलिटीज होंगे जिससे कि ये जो बैंक या फाइनेंशियल इंस्टीट्यूशन था वो अगर फेल होता है उसको ये प्रॉब्लम आती है तो ये सेपरेट एंटिटी अपने जिस पर्पस के लिए फॉर्म की गई थी वो पर्पस कंटिन्यू रख पाए सो so, बैंक जो है अपने जो असेट्स हैं जो ये मॉडगेज पूल है इसको फिर फर्दर एस को सेल करेगा जो एस है या बैंक खुद भी उन सिक्योरिटीज को बेस उन एसेट्स को न्यू सिक्योरिटीज में कन्वर्ट करा देते हैं अब जो ये नई सिक्योरिटीज इन असेट्स का यूज़ करके बनी वो फिर क्रेडिट रेटिंग एजेंसीज के थ्रू रेट की जाएंगी ओके okay, अलग अलग रिस्क प्रोफाइल्स में उन्हें बांटा जाएगा एंड देन कस्टमर्स विल स्टार्ट बाइंग दो सिक्योरिटीज कस्टमर सिक्योरिटी खरीदेंगे तो इन रिटर्न वो उसके लिए कुछ पैसे पे करेंगे सब्सक्राइब करेंगे सिक्योरिटीज को वो जाएगा बैंक के पास और बैंक उस मनी को फर्दर नए लोन्स देने में यूज कर सकता है और फिर वो लोन्स उनका वो मॉडगेज पुल बनाएंगे उससे फिर नई सिक्योरिटीज बन पाएंगी तो ये प्रोसेस चलता रहता है इसको कहते हैं सिक्योरिटाइजेशन आई होप द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ सिक्योरिटाइजेशन इज क्लियर विद यू Now moving ahead to the next question, why I am discussing about securitization? Because recently RBI came up with the set of master directions related to this. RBI recently came up with the securitization of Standard Assets Directions 2021. It mentions about minimum retention requirement. So what is this minimum retention requirement? It, this requirement is designed to ensure that originators have a continuing stake in the performance of securitized assets to ensure that they carry out due diligence of loans being securitized so which of the following correctly states this requirement so is master directions mein minimum retention requirement ke rules specified hai hame correct rules identify karne hai but let's first discuss overall what this set of directions is all about then we we'll come back to this question so this set of master directions say that securitization is the process which involves transactions where credit risk in assets are redistributed by packaging them into tradable securities so what we just saw we saw that the banks used to lend different kinds of loans okay now those there is a high क्रेडिट रिस्क एसोसिएटेड विद दोज लोन्स कि आपने जो लोन्स दिए हैं लोग डिफॉल्ट कर जाएंगे और वो पैसा नहीं मिलेगा ये रिस्क तो है देर इज क्रेडिट रिस्क दैट इफ यू हैव गिवन द लोन्स पीपल माई डिफॉल्ट एंड यू माइट नॉट गेट बैक दोज लोन्स बट स्टिल वॉट यू डू यूजिंग दोज असेट्स यू क्रिएट न्यू सिक्योरिटी सो यू आर रीडिस्ट्रीब्यूटिंग दोज रिस्क दैट इज वॉट हैपन ड्यूरिंग द यू एस फाइनेंशियल क्राइसिस द प्रॉब्लम ऑफ द मॉडगेज बैक सिक्योरिटीज उन मॉडगेजेस के बेसिस पे आपने आगे लोन्स दे रखे थे और जब वो पूरा बबल बर्स्ट हुआ जब मार्केट में प्रॉब्लम आई तो सब सेक्टर्स उससे अफेक्ट हुए जिन्होंने जिन्होंने वो सिक्योरिटीज खरीदी थी सब अफेक्ट हुए सिमिलरली है व्हाट दे आर सेइंग इज दैट सिक्योरिटाइजेशन इन्वॉल्व ट्रांजेक्शन वेयर क्रेडिट रिस्क इन असेट्स आर रीडिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड बाई पैकेजिंग दैम इन टू क्रेडिबल सिक्योरिटीज एंड देन द इन्वेस्टर्स बाय देम बिकॉज दे वॉन्ट टू डाइवर्सिफाई देयर पूल ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट्स while complicated and of op- opaque securitization structures can be undesirable but if they are prudentially structured then they can be really very helpful they will improve risk distribution and enhance the liquidity of lenders in originating fresh loan exposures so agar aapke complicated opaque se securitization structures aap bana rahe ho to obviously wo undesirable hai lekin agar unhe properly structure kiya ja raha hai acche se nayi securities aap इशू कर रहे हो प्रॉपर रेटिंग है सब प्रॉपर प्रोसीजर आपने फॉलो किया है तो उससे क्या है कि लिक्विडिटी भी आएगी और प्रॉपरली आपकी रिस्क भी डिस्ट्रीब्यूट हो जाएगी ओवरऑल दिस इज द होल कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ सिक्योरिटाइजेशन एज डिफाइंड बाय दिस सेट ऑफ मास्टर डायरेक्शन दिस सेट ऑफ डायरेक्शन इज एप्लीकेबल फॉर ऑल स्कड्यूल्ड कमर्शियल बैंक फॉर ऑल इंडिया फाइनेंशियल इंस्टीट्यूशन नबार्ड सिडबी एट्सेट्रा फॉर द स्मॉल फाइनेंस बैंक एज वेल एज एन so what securities can and cannot be securitized what is the minimum retention requirement what is the minimum holding period 
all those kinds of directions which have been provided in this set of master directions are applicable to these entities now talking about assets not eligible for securitization or eligible for securitization so kuch aise assets hai jinhe aap securitize nahi kar sakte kuch hai jinhe aap kar sakte ho see these loans which bank is giving bank will get back the money so it's basically an asset for the bank now which assets are there which cannot be securitized aise kaun si kind of debts hai loans hai jinhe aap securitize nahi kar sakte so lenders including overseas branches of indian banks cannot securitize the following first is resecurization exposures so wo securitization uh, wo assets jinke aap already securitization kar chuke ho unko further aap securitize nahi kar sakte resecurization exposure means a securitization exposure where at least one of the underlying an exposure is a securitization exposure secondly structures in which short term instruments like commercial papers which are periodically rolled over are issued against long term assets to long term assets ke against jab aap koi commercial papers issue karte ho to un us case wo wale assets ka bhi aap securitization nahi kar sakte ho then is synthetic securitization what is it when you have transferred some of your some or whole of your credit risk now if you have given some kind of loans or you are involved in different assets and you have basically hedged your risk against that you have gone for some derivatives and also if that hedging has been done if already protection has been taken then you cannot securitize those assets also you cannot securitize revolving credit facilities for example if some kinds of loans have been given where you have an option to vary your payment when you will be repaying the amount so if as per your requirements you can change that thing like in credit card receivables or cash credit facilities then you cannot convert them into securities then if you have given some loans to the lending other lending institutions to all your india financial institutions then you cannot securitize them if you have restructured some loans or advances they cannot be securitized then loans with bullet payments cannot be securitized ye bullet payments kya cheez hai bullet payment hota hai ki jab aap uh, ek hi bari mein maturity ke line pe lump sum payment karte ho over time gradually aap apna loan nahi repay kar rahe ho ek hi saath maturity date pe repay karte ho so bullet payment is when you make a single repayment of your loan at the time of maturity rather than paying off your loan gradually so these are the cases where you cannot securitize your assets but you can securitize them for all other kinds of loans mentioned in your balance sheet suppose you have given some loans having a tenure up to 24 months okay and you have given such loans to agri for the agricultural activities then in that case you can securitize them if there are some trade receivables up to 12 months they might have been discounted by the lender so all those trade receivables are also Uh, eligible for being securitized. So ये कुछ चीजें थी कि आप इन्हें securitize कर सकते हो या नहीं कर सकते हो Then coming to the minimum holding period. Minimum holding period means a minimum period for which the transfer must hold loans exposures before same is transferred. आपके पास कोई आपने कोई loan दिया अब आप immediately उसको securities में convert नहीं करा सकते इस securitization process से जो लोन के अंडरलाइंग असेट्स है उन्हें इमिजिएटली आप कन्वर्ट नहीं कर सकते आपको कुछ टाइम तक उस लोन को होल्ड करके रखना है उस असेट को उसके बाद ही आप उसे सिक्योरिटीज में कन्वर्ट कर सकते हो सो व्हाट इज दैट मिनिमम टाइम पीरियड टिल विच यू हैव टू रिटेन दी लोन अमाउंट यू के नॉट इमीजिएटली कन्वर्ट दे सिक्योरिटीज द असेट्स अगेंस्ट दैट लोन नीड टू बी हेल्प फॉर सर्टन टाइम पीरियड एंड आफ्टर दैट ओनली यू कैन गो फॉर सिक्योरिटाइजेशन so that time period is for loans up to 2 years it is 3 months and for more than 2 years the um, uh, minimum retain holding period is 6 months so 3 se 6 mahine ka time hai jab tak aapko wo loan hold karke rakhna hai uske baad hi aap securitization kar sakte ho ya loan transfers karne hain agar to wo kar sakte ho moving ahead to the minimum retention requirement what is this this has been asked in the question also minimum retention requirement is designed to ensure that originators have continued stake in the securitized assets now suppose you have given some loans and the mortgage pool which you have built up by giving those loans you want to convert them into other securities basically you want to go for the securitization process 
So if banks convert this entire set of loan into securities and is able to raise some money out of it, then it might not be taking major steps to recover this loan amount. They might not exercise due diligence in this recovery. So it's important that banks have some stake in these securitized assets so that it is uh, exercising due diligence for these kinds of loans and all to be recovered. So what is the minimum retention requirement, minimum stake of bank that is required in such loans that are securitized? Banks ko kuch stake rakhna hoga un loans mein jinne wo securitize kar raha hai. So what is that uh, minimum requirement? For loans with original maturity of 24 months or less, it is 5% of the big value, book value of loan being securitized. So 24 mahine ya usse कम के मैच्योरिटी वाले जो लोन्स हैं उसमें 5% ऑफ द बुक वैल्यू ऑफ लोन्स जिन्हें आप सिक्योरिटाइज कर रहे हो उसका स्टेक उसमें बैंक का स्टेक होना चाहिए देन वंस वेयर द मैच्योरिटी इज मोर देन 24 मंथ्स एंड द बुलेट रीपेमेंट काइंड्स ऑफ लोन्स द रेट इज 10% एंड इन केस ऑफ रेजिडेंशियल मॉर्गेज बैक सिक्योरिटीज इट इज 5% so, जब आप home loans वगैरह दे रहे हो, उसमें आपका जो house है, वो ऐसा mortgage provide किया जा रहा है, और उसके against loans दे रहे हो, और उन loans को use करके नई securities create की जा रही हैं, तो उसमें five percent rate है. Then coming to issuance and listing, so the minimum ticket size to issue securitization notes is one crore. ये पूरा minimum amount है, जिसके जो अगर आप securitization notes issue करना चाहते हो, तो आपको make sure करना पड़ेगा. So this was the uh, this was some uh, these were some points which I wanted to discuss related to this set of directions. Coming back to our question, we had to identify the correct statements. First one says for 24 months or less, it's 10 percent. No, 5 percent. So it's incorrect. For more than 24 months, it's 5 percent. No, we just discussed it was 10 percent. So these two are incorrect. Third one says for the residential mortgage uh, mortgage backed securities, it's 5 percent. Yes, this is correct. So only Third is correct. That's why answer is option B. Moving to third question now. Which says, identify the statements that are correctly related to transfer of loan exposure directions. So, securitization directions ke saath saath RBI ne ye directions bhi release ki hai. So, we have to identify the incorrect statements from here. So, let's first discuss this set of directions. We will discuss some important points only. Okay. So, talking about the transfer of loan exposure direction. Hum log loan transfers karenge ki. Why we will usually transfer the loan elsewhere? Loan transfers are resorted by lending institutions for a multitude of reasons like for liquidity management, for rebalancing their exposures, for strategic sales. So, for a strategic purpose, you can transfer your loan to your own exposures or to your own manage karne ke liye, ya liquidity management. Ke liye. Like in case of securitization, we are trying to manage the liquidity. Okay, we have strategic reason as well that we want more funding which can be used to lend more loans. We might also transfer loans when we are saying that uh, they are we are not able to recover them. Like up ARCs ko apne loans transfer kar dete ho, NARCL ko kar dete ho, taaki wo aapki recovery mein help kar sake. So there can be various reasons for loan transfers. Okay, a robust secondary market in loans can be important mechanism for managing the credit exposures by lending institution and create additional avenues for raising liquidity. It's therefore necessary to have comprehensive, self-contained regulatory guidelines to govern this. Ab, transfer karna loans ko bahut important hai. Kai situations mein hum aisa karte hai, to hamare bhi requirement hai ki usse related ek comprehensive policy banai jai. This mandate put into play the requirement of banks and other lending entities to implement comprehensive board approved policy for these transactions. So, as you have transactions, you have a comprehensive board approved policy. Banani hogi. So, talking about the directions, these are applicable to scheduled commercial bank, regional rural bank, urban cooperative banks, all India financial institutions, small finance banks, as well as your NDFC. So, 24th September, se hi isko implement kar diya gaya hai in entities ke liye. The lenders must put in place a comprehensive board approved policy for transfer and acquisition of loan. So, jo bhi lenders hai, उनको एक पॉलिसी बनानी है जो उनका बोर्ड अप्रूव करेगा एंड उस पॉलिसी में कुछ आ, मतलब पूरे आपको प्रोसीजर्स बताने हैं कि कैसे क्या कौन से केसेस में ट्रांसफर्स अलाउड हैं कैसे अलाउड हैं ऑल दीज थिंग्स 
under these guidelines that lay down the minimum quantitative qualitative standards due diligence it system storage management of data risk management so is set of guidelines mein is directions mein bataya gaya hai ki kaise aap due diligence make sure kar sakte ho kya qualitative quantitative standards aapko follow karne hain kaise aapke it systems hone chahiye risk management ke liye aapko kya karna hai so lenders need to have a board approved policy under these guidelines that lay down these minimum requirements so one important thing which has been discussed in this set of directions is the minimum holding period jo abhi humne piche securitization wale case mein bhi discuss kiya ki minimum holding period kitna hona chahiye 2 saal tak ke loans ke liye 3 months and usse zyada ke liye 6 months so it applies to all kinds of transfers of loans secondly very important thing which was covered under this set of direction is related to transfer of stressed assets सो स्ट्रेस असेट्स क्या होते हैं आप लोगों को लगेगा कि जो एन पी एज हैं वो स्ट्रेस असेट्स हैं वो हैं लेकिन सिर्फ एन पी एज ही नहीं है जो स्ट्रेस असेट्स में आते हैं जो आपके लोन्स जो एन पी एज की तरफ बढ़ रहे हैं जिनमें डिफॉल्ट हो रहा है ऑलमोस्ट दे आर मूविंग टूवर्ड्स बींग एन एन पी ए जो आप स्पेशल मैंशन अकाउंट्स में जिनको अकाउंट करते हो वो भी आपके स्ट्रेस लोन्स होते हैं स्ट्रेस लोन्स मीन्स लोन्स एक्सपोजर क्लासीफाइड एज एन पी एज एज वेल एज स्पेशल मैंशन अकाउंट्स स्पेशल मैंशन अकाउंट्स आर दोज असेट्स दैट शोज दी सिम्टम्स ऑफ बैड असेट क्वालिटी इन फर्स्ट नाइन्टी डेज इट सेल्फ बिफोर बींग आइडेंटिफाइड एज एन पी ए so if your loan becomes due beyond 90 days we classify it as an npa but we if we are seeing within this 90 days only that our loan is we are not able to recover the interest amount the principal amount and it is moving towards being identified as an npa then beforehand only you account for them so that you can take the necessary steps as soon as possible so that that loan does not get converted to an npa so uh, you do the accounting of those kinds of loans under the special mention account jo aapke loans further ja ke npa mein badal sakte hain aap dekh rahe ho ki 30 days tak default ho raha mein raha hai wo wo loans 60 days ho gaye abhi tak default hai to aapko isse idea lag raha hai ki wo npas ki taraf badh rahe hain to aap pehle hi steps de lo to inki jo accounting hai wo special mention accounts mein hum karte hain and special mention accounts aur npas dono hi stress loans mein aate hain now what rbi has what change rbi has come up with now there are some loans which are tagged as fraud to so, kuch loans hain jinhe fraud ki category mein rakh diya jata hai ab jo fraud wale loans hote the na uske against banks ko 100% provision create karna hota tha aur wo fraud wale loans aap asset reconstruction companies ko recover karne ke liye nahi de sakte the ye existing rule tha ab kya hai ab rbi ne allow kar diya hai ki jo fraud wale loans bhi hai na वो भी आप असेट रिकंस्ट्रक्शन कंपनीज को सेल कर सकते हो और वो आपकी रिकवरी में हेल्प करेंगे सो द एग्जिस्टिंग रूल्स ऑन फ्रॉड ऑन द लोन्स व्हिच वर टैग एज फ्रॉड वाज दैट बैंक्स नीड टू सेट असाइड 100 परसेंट आउट हंड्रेड परसेंट प्रोविजन अगेंस्ट दोज लोन्स बट दे वर नॉट अलाउड टू ट्रांसफर सच लोन्स टू दी असेट रिकंस्ट्रक्शन कंपनीज टू हेल्प इन द रिकवरी बट नाउ दे कैन ट्रांसफर दिस टू दी asset reconstruction companies as per new rule of rbi so there were a lot of frauds reported okay these fraud loans amounted to around 3.95 trillion between financial year 19 and 21 so in order to help in the recovery rbi has come up with this rule ki ab fraud loans bhi arcs ko transfer kiye ja sakte hain isse kya hoga uh, the benefit will be that there are high chances of recovery of that part of loan because arcs have specialized experts who will handle that process and arcs will get the benefit to buy such loans at a cheaper rate than the regular loan amounts up loan accounts so aap abhi loan sell karte ho jo npas hain wo arcs recover karne mein help karti hain they pay you some amount for that अब जो ये फ्रॉड वाले लोन्स हैं इन्हें आर कम पैसे पे खरीदेगी और बेसिकली ज़्यादा रेट ज़्यादा अपना प्रॉफिट रखेगी एंड उनको रिकवर करने की कोशिश करेगी सो दिस इज़ दी होल प्रोसेस ऑफ ट्रांसफर ऑफ स्ट्रेस लोन्स टू ए आर सीज विच हैज नाउ बीन अलाउड बाय आर बी आई सो दिस वॉज ऑल विच आई वॉन्टेड टू डिस्कस इन दिस सेट ऑफ डायरेक्शन कमिंग बैक टू द क्वेश्चन इनकरेक्ट स्टेटमेंट सो फर्स्ट इज इन करेक्ट बिकॉज आर बी आई हैज कम अप विद दीज डायरेक्शन नॉट सेबी सेकेंड एंड थर्ड सेकेंड इज करेक्ट that it will pay the um, lenders can sell loans tagged as fraud to arcs which paved the way to recover the F loans 
थर्ड इज ऑल्सो करेक्ट दैट इट्स एप्लीकेबल टू शेड्यूल कमर्शियल बैंक इन एनबीएफसी अगर यहाँ होता ओनली एप्लीकेबल टू शेड्यूल कमर्शियल बैंक इन एनबीएफसी तो गलत हो जाता क्योंकि इसकी एप्लीकेबिलिटी इन सब एंटिटीज में है लाइक आई डिस्कस बट यहाँ मैंशन है कि इन दोनों में एप्लीकेबल है तो ये है दैट्स वाई दिस इज करेक्ट सो ओनली फर्स्ट इज इन करेक्ट आंसर इज ऑप्शन ए Now moving to the last question, which says BLS International Services Limited is a outsourcing service provider for government and diplomatic missions missions worldwide. It has been selected by SBI to deliver banking services in urban, semi-urban, and rural areas to support financial inclusion. So what is happening here? BLS International has been has selected SBI. The SBI has selected BLS International. to deliver financial services in urban areas to support financial inclusion you have to identify this category of banking services facilitator who conduct banking business as agents of bank so we have to identify the keywords over here to so, sabse pehle ye business service banking services facilitator hai jo financial inclusion mein help karte hain semi urban urban rural areas mein financial services pahunchane mein help karte hain aur bank ke agents ki tarah function karte hain so what do we call these banking services facilitator the answer to this question is option d business correspondent so we often call business correspondent the business facilitators ye वो एंटिटीज होती हैं जो बैंक्स के थ्रू अपॉइंटेड होती हैं और ये बैंक के एजेंट की तरह काम करती हैं उन रूरल अर्बन या सेमी सेमी अर्बन एरियाज में फाइनेंशियल सर्विस प्रोवाइड करने में जहाँ तक बैंक खुद नहीं पहुँच पा रहा जहाँ तक जहाँ पे बैंक की खुद के प्रमाइस नहीं हैं सो लेट्स डिस्कस ब्रीफली अबाउट दिस बी एक ऐसी कंपनी है जो अभी एस का बिजनेस कॉरेस्पॉन्डेंट की तरह अपॉइंट हुई है एंड ये अर्बन सेमी अर्बन रूरल एरियाज में एस के कस्टमर्स तक या जो कस्टमर्स तक सर्विसेज नहीं पहुंच पा रही हैं जहां बैंक खुद प्रेजेंट नहीं है वहां तक ये सर्विसेज पहुंचाएंगे ओके न्यू कस्टमर्स क्रिएट करने में हेल्प करेंगे एस को सेविंग्स बैंक सेविंग बैंक डिपॉजिट्स में फिक्स डिपॉजिट में रिकरिंग डिपॉजिट में पेंशन इंश्योरेंस प्रोवाइड करने में नए अकाउंट्स खोलने में मिनी स्टेटमेंट प्रोवाइड करने में पासबुक प्रिंटिंग करने में सब केसेस में जहां बैंक के अपने यूनिट सेटअप नहीं हुए हैं वहाँ ये बिजनेस कॉरेस्पॉन्डेंट फाइनेंशियल सर्विसेज एस बी आई के बिहाफ में पहुँचाएगा ओके इट्स लाइक इट्स काइंड ऑफ प्रोसेस वे यू आउटसोर्स योर एक्टिविटीज टू सम अदर एजेंट विच विल प्रोवाइड दी सर्विसेज टू कस्टमर्स ऑन योर बिहाफ ओके सो बिजनेस कॉरेस्पॉन्डेंट्स आर दोज बिजनेस फैसिलिटेटर्स हु प्रोवाइड फाइनेंशियल सर्विसेज टू एंड इंश्योर फाइनेंशियल इंक्लूजन सो ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा लोगों तक कम से कम कॉस्ट में ये बैंक्स के बिहाफ पे फाइनेंशियल सर्विसेज लोगों तक पहुंचाते हैं द स्कोप ऑफ एक्टिविटीज इंक्लूड आइडेंटिफिकेशन ऑफ बॉरोवर्स कलेक्टिंग प्रोसेसिंग लोन्स वेरिफिकेशन ऑफ प्राइमरी इंफॉर्मेशन क्रिएटिंग अवेयरनेस डेट काउंसलिंग मॉनिटरिंग सेल्फ हेल्प ग्रोप्स टेकिंग अप द डिपॉजिट्स ऑफ पीपल हेल्पिंग दैम विद लोन एंड ऑल दोज काइंड ऑफ स्टाफ so the business correspondents are allowed to conduct banking business as agents of banks at places other than bank premises so it's an important concept which you should be aware about it's a step towards financial inclusion all right so this was all for today's session with this i would like to end up this session i hope it was useful thank you so much